A Bible Tell me story. what you think about Bible story. I mean, this is this is Jordan Peterson's I love your Bible, Bible story. Stories. Okay, this is a Bible story. So I'm um, I've been looking at the story of Jonah. Yeah. And this is a story that you'll appreciate. So here's what happens to Jonah. He's just minding his own business, and then he the voice of God comes to him, and it's and the vo the voice says, "You have to go to this city, Nineveh." Because everybody in Nineveh is like, they've strayed off the path, and I'm thinking about wiping them out. But you could maybe go there and tell them like how foolish they are, and they'll straighten up, and then I won't have to destroy the city. And, jo and, and Jonah thinks, there's no goddamn way I'm going to do that. First of all, Nineveh is a city of his enemies. Babylonia. It's, it's, it, it's, it's a city that he's, right. not, he's not allied with. And so he thinks, right. well, you guys can go to hell in a handbasket, and if God wipes you out, that's perfectly fine with me. Right. And sure. then he also thinks, like any wise man would, it's like... I see, this is the task you have for me. It's like, <laughs> there's 150,000 people there. I'm a foreigner. I'm going to go there and tell them how they're misbehaving, <laughs> and that's going to work out well for me. <laughs> so he thinks, to hell with that, like any sensible person would. And he doesn't say what he has to say, right? So then he hops on a boat, and he gets the hell out of there. Well, it turns out that God's not very happy if you're informed that you have something to say, and then you don't say it. So the storms come and the waves rise and now the ship's uh, in danger. Okay, so what does that mean? got in the whale. It, it, yes, that's right. It means that if you don't say what you have to say when you're called upon to say it, you'll put the whole damn ship at risk. Now the soldiers figure this out, or the sailors, they figure out, oh, there must be someone on the boat that like isn't right with God and that's why we're in danger of being swamped. So they will go and ask everybody and Jonah, to his credit, says, yeah, it's me, you know, I, I had... The voice of conscience made itself manifest to me. I had a task to do. I refused it. I'm screwing things up. And the sailors actually try to save him, but it doesn't work, so they throw him overboard. Now you think, okay, Jonah's got what he deserves because he shut the hell up when he had something to say, and now he's going to die. And you think, that's pretty damn rough. And partly what that means is, if you hold your tongue when you have something to say, then you're going to put the ship at risk, and you'll be lucky if you don't die. All right, but that's not enough. That's not nearly enough, because that isn't all that happens if you don't say what you're called upon to say. So the next thing that happens is Jonah's drowning away. That's about as bad as it gets. And then this creature from hell itself comes up from the bottom of the abyss and <laughs> takes him down. And so now he's in hell for three days. And so that's the next part of the story, which is that if you're called oh. upon to say what you have to say and you refuse it, like you'll end up in a place where you wish Wait, you were not dead. not the whale? Yeah, it's the whale. Oh, okay. It, because, but it's the same thing. Like, that in well, the story, the whale is described as hell. It's I remember exactly in, the same idea. In Religious, the guy who was arguing with me, and he said, uh, he was very, this point was very important to him. He said, the Bible does not say whale. It says big fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well, now it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, well, it's it's the thing, well, what it is, it's a it's a representation of the thing that dwells but in the you, darkness. It's so interesting that you see the lessons in these, and I just always read these things as like super fucking stupid from mm -hmm. the Bronze Age, mm -hmm. you know, and obviously they were telling people something. I mean, whoever wrote this was had a, a message in mind. Well, they were trying to, fi look, they were trying to figure out by telling stories how the state itself got corrupted. And this is one of those stories. So the story is, here's how the state gets corrupted. You're called upon to tell your fellow man, enemy or not, when they're not behaving properly. When your conscience tells you to do that, you're called upon to do that. If you don't do that, the whole ship will start to rock. But do you think the ancients who were reading this at the time and they read the story about the, the he gets swallowed by the big fish yeah. or the whale. You think they got this message? They were like, yeah, but what this really means is when you're called upon, excuse me, I'm talking, when you're called upon, then you step up and do it. No, or no, do you I think, would say it's a step and it's a, it's a, it's a dreamlike step in the developing of understanding. Mm -hmm. So before you fully understand something, you can represent it in a story. Right? It's kind of halfway. A yeah, kid no, will start to understand something by acting it out. They you? may. I mean, they may have gotten it, or they may have gotten it on an unconscious level, right? They got it at an implicit level, on which an is what you, level. yeah. Well, right. that's what okay. you get when you watch a story; is you get it at an right. implicit level, and it's actually very powerful, right? I mean, when people go to movies, most of the time, most people when they go to movies don't sit around afterwards and discuss what the movie meant. They just enjoy the, they just enjoy the story. Right. But that doesn't mean they didn't learn anything. It right. just means they don't reflect on what they learned. 
Now, these, the, the people who came up with these stories, they were telling the stories because the stories were really interesting. But the question, there's a deeper question is, well, why, why the hell was that story interesting? And why was it remembered? And so, what happens to Jonah is that he's in the whale for three days. And then he thinks, I, now I'm in hell. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repent of my inadequacy. I'm willing to say what I have to say. So the whale spits him up on the beach. Then he goes to Nineveh. And he tells everybody oh. what the hell they're doing wrong, and God decides to spare the city. And so, for me, this story oh, encapsulates... To win-win. It's, it's, well, it's a little hard on Jonah. You know, well, well, he there's lived. the whole hell thing. He does. He, he lived. That's right. He it was a did rebirth he, did he story, reloc too. Did he relocate to Nineveh? No, no it, it's just a pilgrimage to Nineveh. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah. he did go... Okay. But he goes there, and then, right. then the city is, in fact, saved. But, but it's perfect, Bill, because what it shows... And, and I know you know this, because you wouldn't speak the way you speak, and this is true of comedians in general. You know that you have a moral obligation, like a deep and profound moral obligation. I do. To say what you have to say. You're and, right. Well, and then you might say, well, what would happen if people didn't say that? Well, that's the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, is if, if everyone, if there isn't anyone who's left who is good and will tell the truth, then the whole city disappears. And the same thing happens in the story of Jonah. So where, it turns to hell. Everything turns to hell if so you don't where, say so what where you have is, to say. So where is North America now on this on this scale of like how many? Well, you you tell me. I, I mean, you, you tell me. What do you see in Hollywood? <clears throat> how terrified are, are people every, of telling yes. their truthful stories now? Oh, oh, everybody. Okay, I mean, and it's, so no, it's. I mean, we're no, we're in a terrible place, and they're yeah. I mean, look, I'm not going to get into the strike stuff but it's um it's rough not being able to put a voice out there and i'm not just talking about mine but our show is one of the few places where you would see people of differing viewpoints mm -hmm. instead of you watch fox news you watch msnbc you know exactly what they're going to say well you know what the question is the answer always begins with you're so right chris mm -hmm. right, right, <laughs> or whoever. right right okay that's not what we do and, you know, I feel like uh, there should be more of that. And with a, and, and with a strike on, there's none of that. So it's a little scary. Well, I've been when, talking... When you only hear one, the one side or the side that, of the bubble you're in. Or, or, or if, you, if you're only allowed to say what the, like, narcissistic Machiavellians want you to say for their own nefarious purposes. I mean, I've talked to lots of people in the entertainment industry who tell me flat out that they're even starting to censor themselves. No, they, they, they can't sit alone in a room now and write down what they actually think or even tell the story they want to tell without having that voice in the back of their head going, you know, if you, you probably shouldn't go there because, you know, the mob's going to come for you. And for, for creative people, as soon as the, 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 what, the angry mob, the angry mob is the tyrant who can't stand the gesture. It's like as soon as you have the angry mob in your head, you're done as a creative person. You're right. Hey, thanks for watching the clip. Hit the subscribe button now so you never miss out on our club random content that's posted daily.